Well, Coach, one of the most exciting days of the year in terms of the future of the program. How are you feeling? Good. It, uh, it's good to get it, uh, get it in, get them all tucked away. Uh, we got exactly what we wanted. Uh, seven Oklahoma kids, nine Texas. Um, huge, huge class for midterm. Uh, bringing players in early is getting very popular. So, um, uh, you know, it's kind of what we've done here for the year, years past. We, we like to concentrate on, on Oklahoma and Texas and surrounding states. And so um, this will put us uh, at the number of 85, which is what we need to be at um, as we more, move forward through the summer. Members of the media, if you have questions for Oklahoma State Coach Mike Gundy, please click raise hand. Our first question is going to come from Cody Nagel from Pokes Report. Go ahead, Cody Nagel. Or excuse me, from Go Pokes. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cody. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned you were able to bring in um, a number of in-state um, talent guys. Um, I believe this might be you know, one of the most you've ever signed in a single class as far as scholarship. How important is that to the program? And what does that say about the quality of football in the state of Oklahoma? Well, I've said this for the last four or five years that the, the football in the state of Oklahoma is getting better and better, in our opinion. Um, if you look at our roster per capita by Oklahoma players, you'll see that um, the percentage is very high of players that, are, that we're having success with on game day from the state of Oklahoma. So we're very proud of that. Um, we consider Texas, for the most part, in-state. Uh, you know, we're four-hour drive to the Metroplex and all that surrounding area in East Texas. A little, little different when you get into Central Texas and Houston area. But overall, uh, we're very excited about what the state of Oklahoma offers us. It, How difficult was it to recruit in this class with the, with the Ted dead period going on, you know, ever since, since March? I know the staff had to get creative with how they, they approached this cycle. It, it, it wasn't an issue because it was the same for everybody. So... Uh, we might have learned a lot in recruiting from a standpoint of um, in the future, uh, it might be more feasible to be more uh, virtual. It's like we're learning a lot of other things over the last nine months with COVID. Um, I think the one issue that, uh, that we all struggle with is we didn't get to see them or their parents face to face. Um, but I, I think that it was equal for everybody across the board. So I wouldn't say there was an advantage one way or the other. All right, thank you. Our next question comes from Marshall Levinson from Folk Support. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Coach, can you talk about, uh, there was one reclassification with the Kelvion Beeman. Can you talk about what it is to, or what it's like to bring a guy in uh, with his talent in early um, to get his development uh, kind of on track where you where you want it? Who, who did you mention you cut out on me? To Kelvion Beeman, uh, reclassifying to 21. Yeah, he, he, uh, we, he's been committed to us for a long time, and then he uh, made a decision to, uh, to come out early. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of these players are graduating early, um, getting credit, so on and so forth. You know, that's kind of the, the, the style now. So um, he wanted to come out early and get started, and, and obviously he's the player that we wanted for over a year. And then with the, with the rest of the cornerbacks, you have several guys that are – primarily receivers in high school, but we'll be making the switch to defense. Um, can you talk about the mindset or the the uh, process of switching those guys over and, and what you see in those guys? Um, speed, athleticism, and ball skills is what we're looking for. Uh, we've had a lot of success in the past bringing guys in and, and switching them over to the other side of the ball. Uh, so we, we want them to be able to run, we want them to be athletic, and we want them to have good ball skills. Thank you, Coach. Our next question comes from Robert Allen from Triple Play Sports. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Mike, it's always hard to find a, a big defensive tackle, and you found one in, of all places, Class A ball in Oklahoma. Talk a little bit about Aiden Kelly and, and what he brings to the table. Well, Aiden's a, a special young man being from western Oklahoma. You know, grew up in, in farms 12, 14, 16 hours a day in the summer and the spring. Um, actually still farms in the mornings and goes to school and goes to workouts. Uh, he, he brings in the, the type of work ethic that we're looking for. I think he's just scratching the surface. Um, he's, you know, he's a 290 pounder that's um, extremely strong, but more importantly, um, has ties to the state of Oklahoma. 
is very fond of Oklahoma State University uh, and just scratching the surface from his athletic ability as he develops in the weight room over the next couple of years. It's going to be hard for people not to compare the Green Twins to the Wallaces, you know, being twins coming from the Metroplex area. What do you see in them? Because I had an ESPN recruiting analyst the other day compare their body type closer to a Des Bryant type than maybe a, a Tylen Wallace. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to check here because I don't know what, what their body has done since the last time. Uh, yeah, those guys are going to play at 215 or 220. So you're looking at a, a completely different body structure, um, but with athleticism. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Every time that I called them or FaceTimed them, I only had to call one of the numbers because they were inseparable, just like the Wallace uh, brothers. So um, close knit, close family. Um, going to bring a lot to the program, but they could play, they could play at 220. Last thing for me, one of the things you fight, I know when uh, John Paul Richardson got offered, you know, he's Bucky's kid and, and you thought he'd have been all over the radar, but you offered and all of a sudden within about a week, 15 other division one schools offered. And then kind of the same thing later with Nick Martin, you guys jumped in on that kid from Texarkana and, uh, next thing you know, he's a four star and he's got all kinds of attention. Uh, you feel like sometimes you have people watching what you guys do. And then, you know, when an offer is made, it's almost like, oh, let's go check this guy out. Not sometimes it's been going on for 10 years. Everybody needs to learn to do their job themselves and quit patterning themselves off us. Fair enough. Our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, you talk about getting to the 85, but with the uncertainty of what your roster is going to look like with the extra eligibility for everybody, how much of a balancing act was this recruiting class in terms of hitting a precise number? And how do, how do you proceed going forward? We don't have any idea. You, you match up your 85 uh, NCAA or whoever's going to govern college football um, over the next nine to 12 months is going to have to make a decision on what we do with the 85. My opinion, they're going to have to get rid of the 85. You have open transfer that's going to be going in in the spring. It's going to be pushed back to players that decide to transfer as we speak now. They're going to be open transfer. Um, it's going to happen. It's the new thing across the country. Young men are going to jump in. Now, the issue you have is you have an overloaded portal with not many scholarships to give. So some of the players are going to have to be real careful about jumping in the portal um, based on there's not going to be many scholarships to offer to transfers. But I have no idea what's going to happen with the 85. I have no idea what's going to happen with the 25 because there's not been anybody give us any indication of what direction we're going. When you, um, when you're dealing with kids on the portal going out, do you, are you warning them that, hey, this may not be the, the rosy path it's been the last few years? Sure, I, I just let them know uh, because they, they leave for different reasons. Um, sometimes you have a young man that says, I just wanna go be closer to home. And if they've already got their degree here, um, then you certainly understand that. But um, I'm going to guess that they have a pretty good indication of where they're going and they have somewhere to land uh, and their education paid for, which in most cases with these guys would be postgraduate school. Uh, otherwise, there's not going to be many out there based on the super seniors that are floating around these Power Five conference schools. Thanks, Mike. Sure. Our next question comes from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Mike, uh, again, you, you guys like uh, th those two-way players, but how unique is a guy like Ty Williams who's two-way from quarterback in secondary instead of your usual like a wide receiver in secondary type of guy? Well, Ty Williams is a freakish athlete. He's, he's going to be 210 pounds someday. He's going to run four or five. Um, he's got really good ball skills. Um, um, we have a good relationship with the people in Muskogee. They speak very highly of him as a um, young man and what he brings to the program. I called him several times this year and um, during the week, and he would be riding his bike to Wednesday night church. 
um, things like that. So I think he's a great fit here, um, but we have uh, a lot of confidence and are very excited about his unusual um, strength, leaping ability, and ball skills for the multiple positions that he plays. <clears throat> And I know you've, you've made the comment before of, of when it comes to defensive backs, you guys are looking more for a type than a position, per se. Is he a guy that you think is going to sit in there at safety or could potentially uh, be a guy who you work in at cornerback as well? I wish I could give you an answer, but we're, we're, we're going to sign DBs that are athletic, have good ball skills, and can run. And then we'll slot them in when they get here um, based on what we think is best. But – the way that we're playing um, defense now, um, the different types of coverages, particularly a lot of man coverage, gives these guys a chance to come in and still develop some skills that allow them to prepare for the NFL because basically that's what you play in the NFL, a lot of man coverage. And so um, we've had a lot of interest from young men that are willing to play in our defensive secondary in any of the five positions because they like that they get to play man coverage over 50 percent of the time and that's potentially developing them and putting really good video together for the nfl thanks for your time this morning mike got it our next question comes from danielle dwyer from fox 25 go ahead danielle Danielle, we're not hearing you are you there I'm here. I'm here. Can I get okay. uh, unmute there for a little bit? Um, Mike, I wanted to. You want to come back to me until I can figure this out? Yeah. That on my end. Sure thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, our next question is going to come from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Mike, you mentioned the early enrollees, uh, and I know that here in Oklahoma, high school football is wrapping up, but I know down in Texas, they got their playoffs pushed back. You, you've got some guys that I know are still playing. If they make it all the way to state championships, I think those games are like mid-January in Texas. How will that work out if, they, if those guys overlap with your early enrollee group? They, they will come in three or four days later. It's not an issue. Um, they'll, they'll still be able to, uh, to start school. Um, those games would be on January, uh, I think, I don't know if it's the 15th or 16th, whatever that Saturday is in January. That's when those games, we've got several players that could potentially be in that position, but then they'll finish up and come rolling on in the next week. Uh, the, the, uh, I know that uh, you can't talk about guys you might still be going after, but uh, the class that you have right now, uh, position that stands out with nobody there is quarterback. Is that is that an area you'll be looking at uh, moving forward, or are you good with where you are with the quarterbacks right now you have? Well, I mean, we're always looking for what's out there, but um, these are the positions that we feel that, uh, that we needed to fill to solidify the numbers that we look for by position across our board. All right. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Our next question comes from Garen Emig from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Garen. Mike, can you still uh, wow kids with your facilities or is it harder to separate more and more every year with, with all the stuff that's going up uh, across the country? Well, it, nobody's visiting here. There's not been anybody on our campus. And so- Not uh, this year, right. Yeah, I mean, you do virtual, but um, I mean, it's just not the same. I mean, it's just like us doing these, these Zoom calls we do. It's just not the same as having a conversation in person with all of us there. Uh, so, uh, the interesting thing, I don't know if you were on earlier, but I got asked the question. Um, the interesting thing about, um, recruiting this year is, uh, we've learned a lot in the ability that we have to do some things virtually. You do lose face-to-face -face conversation with the recruit and his parents. I, that is a, the, uh, the one side of it that none of us like. Um, and if there's a second, it's, you don't see any facilities, nobody, I mean, they look at things on zoom and on videos, but there's not anything going on right now, facility wise. In, but in, in general, all things being equal in an, in a normal year, I know it's an abnormal one. Is it, is it harder to, to get kids attention with facilities or again, does everyone have the, the bright, shiny new palace to show off? I mean, I think, I don't know who, who doesn't have anything bright and new. Uh, right. 
that's just kind of the way it is. I mean, in football, if you haven't built something new in, in two or three years, uh, in most cases, you're falling behind. That's what happens. And um, most of the, the schools that we recruit against are all, all have relatively new facilities, um, maybe except a couple in this league. Um, but uh, that's, that's kind of the way it is. People are always building something new. Yeah, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, Danielle Dwyer, we're going to go ahead and go back to you. Uh, see if sound is a little bit better this time. Go ahead, Danielle. All right, I think I got fixed. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you uh, first off about um, Colin Oliver. And you guys just seem to have this bloodline between Edmund Santa Fe when it comes uh, especially to that position. You know, you have Trace Ford. Uh, what about Colin or how – how good is that bloodline kind of between those guys is, um, you know, and you look at even um, like Calvin and stuff to kind of help bring those guys, make them maybe feel more comfortable. Um, and also just showing them that they would fit into the scheme. Well, I guess, if that makes sense. Again, we're, we're very high on Oklahoma high school football. Uh, Calvin Bundage was a, was a very uh, moderately recruited player. Trace Ford was moderately recruited. Um, we offered Colin a long time ago when he was probably 195 or 200. He's close to 220 now. We see him as a guy that could potentially develop in Coach Glass's weight room like Trace Ford. So we see guys in Oklahoma that we feel like that are going to develop in our, in our culture, in our strength conditioning program. Um, we like him more than other people because we have to look down the road. Uh, we go after him and we don't look back and we, we see him falling in that category. You talk about looking down the road and I guess th that was kind of a question. Maybe it is a concern to you. Maybe it's not. But when you do look further in the next year or two with how recruiting had to go this year, you know, not being able to see guys in person face to face and relying more on tape. Is there any concern about some of the talent of these guys maybe not being what you thought it would be in a couple years from now is is that a concern at all about maybe uh the impact this could have on the program none whatsoever the the technology has allowed us to watch video on anybody anywhere in the country from seventh grade up we can see all their games we can pull it up i can pull the nfl game up i can pull any call any college team watch all their games this year I can pull any high school team, any junior high team, unless somebody at that particular school refuses to put them um, online, which is very, very, very rare. So we have everything we need. Uh, we get information from talking to uh, principals, teachers, counselors, people we know at the schools. We have good relationships at the schools in Oklahoma and Texas because we've been going in there forever. And we get information on young men. Um, we talk, we, we can watch all their video. And then we can have communication with them. Uh, as I said earlier, we're just losing the face-to-face -face with the players and the parents, which I don't like, okay? I mean, if you and I are going to have a conversation that's worthwhile and it's face-to-face, -face, it's going to be much better because I can see your body reactions. I can see your emotions. You can see mine. Um, so that side of it is not as good. But this class is fantastic. This, I'm not concerned at all about this class. Um, Todd Bradford has come in as our director of recruiting and, and uh, he's brought a lot of new ideas and things. It's been awesome. Um, uh, I like the staff. I like the way they recruit. Putting this group with the guys that we have here and the players that we'll recruit over the next two years, we'll be competing for a Big 12 championship. Did you rely a little bit more maybe on if they played multiple sports, looking at them not just in football, maybe more than in years past? I like multiple sport guys. Multiple sport guys mean that they're athletic. If I can play a high school uh, at the high school level and I can play two sports, then that means I'm more athletic than a guy that only plays one. Or the other guy would be playing two sports in most cases. You have a few players that just say, I want to isolate on football. But if I have a player that can play basketball, he can 360 dunk and he can also play DB or wide out, he's probably a fairly good athlete. If I can, if I find a young man that's like Malcolm Rodriguez or, or uh, Brock Martin, who's a three or four time state champion wrestler and still plays football and plays shortstop on the baseball team, he's going to be really athletic and he's competitive and I know he's tough. So we like multi-sport athletes. We like wrestlers. 
Um, we like guys that are physical and that can run, and then hopefully we can find a place to put them as they develop in our culture here at Oklahoma State. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Our next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike, in regards to the, you know, the next man up concept, if you ever get in situations where you have injuries and you've got to go deeper into your depth chart, how important is it to have um, junior college transfers in each class if you need to go to them earlier than you, you would like knowing they've got some type of experience? So if we get um, to a spot where we have issues um, depth wise with being an immature or inexperienced or not physically ready to play, like what, what happened to us this year in the offensive line. We put three players in the game that played the last 75% of the season for us in the offensive line who gave us awesome effort and they're gonna be good players in this program, but they weren't physically strong enough to play and they weren't ready to play based on experience. If we get in that position, we have to look to say, okay, how can we solve that problem as quick as possible so we don't get into the same situation next year? And that's based on who we have coming back, what their maturity level is, what we think their strengths level, strength levels are. And then that determines, do we go pick a high school player up and put him in the program or developing? Or do we go find a, a portal player? And, I'm, and when I say portal, I'm calling junior college portal. It's all the same now, right? What difference does it make? You're either getting a kid that's got three years or two years left, sometimes a one year. You go pick up a portal player and bring him in if you feel like there's somebody you need to add based on inexperience or strength levels at one particular position. Thank you, Mike. You got it. Our next question comes from Marshall Levinson from Folks Report. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Coach, can you talk about um, Nick Martin? Obviously, he plays uh, running back and linebacker for Pleasant Grove, and he played running back at a high level. But can you talk about just what you see at him at linebacker? and his, his physicality and what he brings to the game? Old school. First time I talked to Nick, I said, Nick, you know why I like you? Because you're old school. You like to play football. You like to hit. They're going to play him everywhere because he's very athletic. Um, we're going to bring him in and put 20 pounds on him. He can run. He's athletic. He's, he's very tough. He likes to play football, and he's a good young man. He's a perfect fit for us here at Oklahoma State. But he's old school. He'll strike you, and he's not scared. And then, Coach, can you talk about um, every time I've talked to one of these recruits, they talk about how close this 21 class has been with each other. Um, and in this year, it seems like there may have been a little bit more than previous years. Can you talk about what that means for your program in the future and, and the, the tight-knit bond that a lot of these recruits have with each other and they really haven't even seen each other or been with each other because there's been no recruiting visits? One of the rare pluses of social media is a group of young men being able to develop a relationship prior to them coming on the campus, and that allows that to happen. Thank you. Our next question comes from Scott Wright from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, Mike, I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit about uh, Caleb Etienne and what, uh, what that guy brings. Uh, he's obviously a... Uh, a mountain of a man. Yeah, um, New Orleans by way of junior college in Kansas, um, 6'7", 330, I don't know, give or take, maybe more, maybe less, something in that area. Um, he's going to bring a lot of uh, size and, and strength and experience to us. Um, obviously something we needed based on um, having the issues we had this year with inexperience uh, at the offensive line position. And so he's a guy that will give us um, some, some juice. You know, he's going to give you some size and some strength um, at, uh, at that position as soon as he gets on campus. And then um, touching back on the, uh, on the early enrollees, are there additional benefits uh, that, that maybe aren't, aren't obvious? Uh, or, or is it just kind of the obvious stuff of, uh, of just getting in there and getting the, the early work and extra work for those guys? It's, uh, it's based individually on young men. Some of them uh, want to go to their spring, seat, spring year of high school. Some of them are ready to move on with their life. Uh, if, if they get in here, they're obviously going to get 12 to 15 hours. Uh, they're going to learn the college experience. They're going to um, come through our, our uh, off-season conditioning program and find out that they're not in good shape. They're going to get that out of the way. They're, they'll get to go through spring ball. Um, Hopefully they can absorb 50% of what they learn in spring ball. 
Um, then they go through summer conditioning. They should already know the terminology. They should already be in decent shape. They should understand what it takes to perform here on a physical level. That'll help them in the summer. And then when we roll around to August, they'll be considerably further ahead than what a, a player would be coming in on campus in August, just because they finally have gone through everything and I'm sure failed and struggled and realized that um, it's not what it was in high school and figured out a way to overcome adversity is what I see. Um, but there's no guarantees there, but that's what they're getting if they come in early. So does that excite you to have almost half your class now coming in early? Well, it helps us in spring ball because of your numbers. You know, obviously you lose uh, the majority of your seniors. Could be a little different this year with the super senior class. Don't have any idea about that. And then when you have players leave and go on the portal, um, you know, I, I, I would think you're going to, you know, we'll have just guessing three or four or five players that will go on the portal over the next few months just based on uh, percentages and what happens. I think that's fairly common for most um, Power Five schools right now. I don't know who those players would be, but just seeing the numbers when that happens, when you get more numbers to come in and be in spring ball, that gives you a chance to compete more and have better competitive practices during spring ball. With the uh, with the super seniors that you mentioned, are you having those conversations right now with those guys trying to figure out what their next step is? No, we don't have to because after we play in the bowl game and they go get a break and they report back to school in January, if they report back in January and show up for off-season conditioning, then that means they're going to play. If they don't, then that means they're not. So you don't really – I mean, it just kind of solves itself, you know. Process of elimination. Very good. Thanks, Mike. You got it. All right, and our final question will come from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Mike, traditionally in the past few years, you, you haven't allocated a lot uh, in scholarships and whatnot when it comes to the cowboy back position, uh, relying more on, on walk-ons. Uh, what was it about Austin that, that made you guys say that we want to commit to getting him on scholarship? Needed a little maturity uh, at that position. We're, we're in uh, 11 and 12 personnel more than we have been um, uh, in the past years. So you need a little bit more depth. Um, he's athletic. We think, it, we think that he's um, a little bit of a gem from the standpoint that he's not really developed himself physically. We feel like that we can grab him, um, develop him physically, get his strength levels up to a point where he can be competitive at the point of attack next fall. And we feel like that he'll still be very athletic, which is what we look for at that particular position. Um, we don't go all the way across the country a lot unless we feel like that we have a young man that will fit into our culture and do well in a geographical area here. Um, and he's uh, done a, a, a very good job over the last two years of taking care of himself. Uh, he's become a self-made guy. He works, he works at a restaurant 20 to 25 hours a week. He's a full-time student, he's training. I like what he brings to the table. Um, I think that he understands commitment and he realizes that there's a work ethic that has to be established in order to be successful in life. And I see him at that point with where he's at in his career. I don't know. I believe most junior colleges push their, their playing to the, the spring. Is, is that the case with his? And if so, it, do you, is he going to try to uh, play next spring? You know, what's interesting, Jason, is – I can't keep up with what, the, what they're doing now. Mississippi's doing one thing. Texas is doing another. Kansas is doing another. California's doing another. Um, I don't have any idea what they're doing out there. Um, we want him to be comfortable with whatever he feels like that he needs to do with his career and his lifestyle. Um, we put the ball in his court. Uh, you know, I, I'm just guessing with all the things that flash across my computer about the virus on the West Coast. I don't know that they'll be playing out there. So maybe he shows up sooner, maybe he plays. We'll just kind of follow his lead. All right, thanks, Mike. Well, Coach, I'll do it for questions. Is there anything else maybe that you wanted to talk about um, as it pertains to the signing class? Well, I think this is a fantastic class. As always, we bring um, really, really quality young men into our culture. It's interesting in this group, we've got uh, the majority of them that we really have a, a good idea of what they'll do. We have two or three guys uh, that we think have really, really, really high ceilings. They haven't reached that point yet. So it'll be interesting to see how they develop in our program. 
we always take two or three guys a year that we feel like that can come in and as they develop and buy into our culture, they could potentially be uh, mid early round NFL picks. Or if they don't, you know, maybe they end up not doing it. But uh, this is a fantastic class. Um, a lot of credit goes to our recruiting office with Todd Bradford and then our coaches who did a great job with all the virtual and uh, FaceTime and phone calls that we had to use based on the virus. So I couldn't be any more proud of them. Um, Marilyn Middlebrook her and her group and academics were fantastic as always. You know, we have so much to sell there. You know, we're setting it, gosh, what, 364 now graduates since I've been the head coach here. Uh, and so we have so much to sell there and she's done a great job. So I'm just proud of all of them. Uh, much deserved break for everybody. Um, so uh, they've done a great job. I'm looking forward to them getting a little time off. Coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate it as always. Members of the media, thank you as well.